Today is Palm Sunday, the day Jesus comes to Jerusalem. This is called the triumphal entry. We read from Luke chapter 19. It says, After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread the cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Now, in times of war, the conqueror would ride upon a prancing stallion. But in times of peace, the king would ride a colt to symbolize that peace prevailed. So for Jesus to ride into Jerusalem upon a colt is to declare to everyone watching and paying attention that he is king. Even before Jesus arrives, though, the news had spread that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. You can imagine the excitement that would be prevailing at that moment. Have you heard the news? Lazarus died and was buried in a tomb so long that his body had started to decay. But this teacher from Nazareth said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came back to life. I saw him with my own eyes. Then they stripped away the grave clothing and he actually walked and breathed and lived again. Surely only the Messiah, only the Son of God could do that. As the crowd gathered, they would have whispered and shouted to each other, this is the same Jesus that healed the sick and performed many miracles. He is coming. He is coming. The news travels from one person to another until finally when Jesus was ready to enter the city, great crowds had collected on both sides of the road. They were there. They had cut palm branches and were shouting, Hosanna to the King! Excitement was building throughout the whole city. My question for you today, how would you have responded to Jesus then? And how will you respond to Jesus now? Would you greet Jesus with mocking? You see, there were those in that crowd that sat in the distance mocking this whole moment. They were mocking Jesus. They would have said things like, who is this homeless carpenter acting like a king? He's a lunatic. He's living in a world of fantasy. And the truth is, just like people mocked Jesus then, people still mock Jesus today. They mock Jesus in the media. They mock Jesus in their art. They mock Jesus with their words. They think they are so clever. There are some who simply don't have any understanding of Jesus at all. They have only encountered fakes and frauds and false prophets. They mock, but honestly, they normally are mocking from a place of ignorance. They have yet to meet the real thing. In the Scripture, we see that Jesus was in the habit of taking dead things and bringing them back to life. He took Lazarus and called him back to life. He breathed new life into the bodies and the hopes and dreams of people wherever he went. And just as he breathed life into humanity at creation. In Genesis 2, 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Jesus breathed new life into dead things. I, I understand mockers. When 
you have never seen Jesus in action, when you have never seen Jesus take a woman who was just a walking skeleton and see Jesus set her free from a decade of addiction, when you have not encountered that angry and vile man and watch him be turned into the most gentle of human beings, when you have not seen the fearful become fearless or the powerless become powerful, the sick become well, you can understand how it is that someone could be a mocker if they've never encountered Jesus. In Isaiah 25, it says, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away tears, all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against His land and people. The Lord has spoken. Notice it says that someday He will remove all mockery. But also notice it does not say He will remove all mockers. The great news about this is that Jesus loves to take mockers and transform them into men and women on mission. Even mockers are invited to come and join in the kingdom of Jesus. And if you're a mocker today and you're just surfing on the internet and found us, you're invited into the kingdom of Jesus. How would you greet Jesus? Would you greet him as a mocker or would you greet Jesus with anger, perhaps, like the Pharisees? See, others in the crowd would have been there to greet Jesus with that anger. They would have been upset because they would interpret his riding into the city as arrogance or blasphemy against God. They would be waiting for him to say one wrong word, to make one mistake. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, these religious leaders of the time, they were there. They were supposed to be keepers of the law and spiritual leaders. But Jesus had gained so much popularity that they felt threatened. They were full of jealousy. And today, some still greet Jesus with anger. They are angry with the challenge of Jesus to live justly. They are angry that He opposes them when they oppress the poor and the vulnerable because they have no desire to change. They are angry that He exposes wickedness or evil in their life. The truth of Jesus threatens their power that has been built on the back of the powerless. The triumphal entry of a king that stands for justice and peace would not be welcomed by those. The gentle riding on a colt with throngs of hopeful people would have filled them with anger. They greeted Jesus with anger. How would you greet Jesus? How will you greet Jesus today? Would you greet him with skepticism? You see, there were Roman soldiers all around during this time. The, the nation was under Roman occupation, and these Roman soldiers were there. They were constantly fearing revolt and watching for any sign of rebellion against Rome. They were ready and waiting to crush any uprising. Jesus realized as he listened that day to the hosannas of the crowd that soon the sinister voices would drown out the voices of love that he was receiving that day. That those crying for him to be king would soon be replaced by those crying crucify him or simply standing aside saying nothing at all. The Roman soldiers knew something as well. These soldiers knew it was Passover time. They realized it was traditionally a time that brought about skirmishes and violent reactions. They had not forgotten that there had been other people gathering large crowds and leading an uprising against the Roman occupiers. They knew that Passover would bring trouble, and so they were ready, ready to greet Jesus with skepticism. How will you greet Jesus today, though? Will you greet Jesus with skepticism? You see, Jesus is still writing into the moments of our life. And right now, we are facing a global challenge. Where is Jesus? Some might ask. Well, I would say to you today, He is right there. 
He's right there with you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. It's like in this text you get the image of Jesus wrestling, just as a wrestler, just wrestling with all of the bad stuff in life and forcing all of that bad stuff to ultimately work for the good of those that love God. And there are so many right now that are misunderstanding the moments that we are in, the moments that we are facing today. Some have somehow come to think that God has sent a plague upon the world and that this plague is upon the world now for the sins of humanity. Now, I understand why they think it, but the logic of it is so messed up because somehow they've convinced themselves that God is systematically killing off the most vulnerable people in the world. No. Absolutely not. Any time in Scripture that Jesus came face to face with sickness, be very, it's very important for you to understand this. Look at what Jesus does to sickness. Any time... Jesus comes face to face with sickness of any kind at all. He treated it as a scourge of Satan and immediately began to wage war against the work of Satan in that person's life. He did not go into a theological debate about where the sickness came from. No, he understood all sickness to come from Satan. And this COVID-19 crisis is clearly the work of of Satan trying to steal, kill, and destroy the lives of as many people as he possibly can. But Jesus, but Jesus is leading his kingdom, the kingdom of God, to fight back, to wage war against it by using the wisdom and gifts and talents that God has given us. How do we use them? We use them to protect and serve the vulnerable, to wage war against COVID-19 in prayer, to pray for the sick, and to heal the sick. And so today, I challenge you, make sure you are waging war just as Jesus did against things like this. Also today, I want to especially encourage you to pray for our healthcare workers and for all essential personnel. Continue to pray for them every single day and throughout every single day. Ultimately, Jesus is at war with this disease. And we get to join with him in war against it as well. This is the Jesus that came riding into Jerusalem. He was greeted in a variety of ways. How will you greet him? Will you mock this Jesus? Will you be angry with this Jesus? Will you be a skeptic like so many that still greet Jesus with skepticism. They don't understand His claims to be God, His extreme concern for the poor. And sometimes the truth is that those that claim to follow Jesus don't seem to be very serious. And so it's easy to become skeptical. But I would challenge you today to greet Jesus with joy. Greet Him with joy like those that love Jesus. And I want you to think about the crowd that day and think about the crowd and the individuals that were in the crowd and their stories that brought them to the moment where they're cheering Jesus. People like Bartimaeus most likely would have been there. Bartimaeus, in Scripture it says, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He was a, earlier a blind man Everybody told to be quiet, but he refused to be quiet as Jesus came by. Jesus asked him what he wanted, and he said, I want to see. And at a previous moment, Jesus had healed his eyes. Imagine this man who had received his sight and now had been living with his sight. He was no longer in beggar's clothes and beggar's rags, but now he has joined the crowd and he is welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem with great joy. Maybe the loudest of all of them, cheering and yelling and exclaiming to those around, I'm I'm Bartimaeus, I'm blind Bart, I'm the guy that got his eyesight back. 
I can imagine Bartimaeus screaming out to Jesus, Jesus, hey Jesus, it's me. I'm the one you showed mercy to. I see you. I still see you. That would have been a great moment to be well, witnessed to. Or how about Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was an extremely hated man. But after previously meeting Jesus, he had paid his debt back to society and had made his peace with God. Imagine Zacchaeus squeezing to the front of the crowd so he could see and running along with Jesus, cheering for him. Or what about the many lepers? Their, their skin had been cleansed and healed by Jesus. And now they're rejoicing for the healing that Jesus had given them. Imagine they run up to Jesus and give Jesus a high five and say, Jesus, look, my hand, it didn't fall off. Or maybe Jairus' daughter was there. Here she is. She's back to life after previously experiencing death and Jesus raising her from the dead. Imagine her now on her dad's shoulders so she's high enough to be able to see Jesus. And imagine as Jesus is riding along on the colt. Imagine as he looks at Jairus' daughter and gives her a wink as he passes by. Lazarus and Mary and Martha and Mary Magdalene, they were all there. Their lives reflected the love that was in their hearts for this man who had taught them and molded them and changed them. Among the crowds would be people that he had healed. Some had been among the thousands that he had fed, and many more would have seen him perform the miracles and listened as he spoke with authority. They had listened and their lives had been changed. I think this moment, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, would have been one of the greatest moments in history to witness. Some today still greet Jesus with great joy. He still offers forgiveness from sin. He still heals the sick. He still restores sight to the blind. And he can still change a dead marriage and resurrect it. He can still set the captives free. He can still take an addict and deliver them entirely. He can still take the hardest heart and melt it with this love. He can still t look at the impossible with you and in a moment turn it into an impossibility. He can still change your life your heart, your mind, your soul. So on this day, on this Palm Sunday, how will you greet Jesus? How will you respond to Jesus today? Will you remain unchanged, unmoved, staying on the outside looking in? Or will you respond with joy and receive the forgiveness and leadership that Christ offers you today. Friends, if you are joining us today and you have never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins or to lead your life, I want to encourage you in your own words today, right where you are at, at home or wherever you're watching this, simply invite Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to lead your life. If that's something that you want to do today, and you would like us to pray for you, on your screen, if you're at online.church, you can simply press, you can simply raise your hand by clicking the button on the screen and invite us to pray for you, and we would love to pray for you. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you would simply message us and let us know so that we can pray with you as well. Today, I would like you to join me in prayer, all of you right where you are at, whether you're with your family or whether you're by yourself, gather together in your homes and join me today in prayer. Heavenly Father, today, as a congregation and as a people, even though we are dispersed to our homes and we are dispersed to many different areas, we join in agreement today in coming against the sickness that has ravaged our world. We come against the coronavirus, the COVID-19. We ask that you would halt this disease in its tracks. We join together with millions of other believers across the planet in praying this. 
that you would stop this by your mighty hand. Today we also pray for the sick, those that are are in desperate situations. God, we ask that you would heal the sick. We pray also today that you would give our leaders wisdom, not just in the United States, but across the world. Every leader on this planet, would you give them wisdom in how to respond? For those that are still in denial, I ask that you would speak to them, that you would whisper to them today and get them to understand what is happening. Today, I also want to pray for our workers, those that are working in our healthcare facilities, our essential personnel. Father, today, I ask that you would protect them, that you would give them uh, rest, that you would give them strength, that you would, give, uh, that you would protect their families as well. And today I want to pray especially for our congregation. I ask that you would set up a hedge of protection around them. That you would send angels about them. And that we would find that those in our congregation are remaining healthy and strong and vibrant and wise. And that together all of us would join with Jesus in waging war against this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. I encourage you to join us again next week and throughout the week. I uh, counted this week. We have 36 different opportunities for you to join us in different online formats. And that does not include our small groups that you might be part of. So we have many opportunities for you to join us online. Please uh, choose one or two of them each week. We'd love to see you throughout the week. Let us know if there's anything we can do to serve you. God bless uh, you as you go on with your day. Uh, Thank you for joining us again.